can do it. All right. So the end. Uh, we're just the only thing we're talking about today is a repeat of what we covered in 1406 on meiosis. And meiosis was a formation of the. What are we making a meiosis? You're making sex cells, which are also called gametes, and this process is called gametogenesis, which means what? I'm making gametes. All this is, is meiosis, just presented in the reproductive chapter. Okay? So we already know that gametes are formed in the gonads. The male gonad are the testes, the female gonads are the ovaries. The testes make sperm, the ovaries make eggs. Now we say eggs, but technically it's going to be referred to as an ova or an ovum. Um, oocyte, you're going to hear those terms, so it's not just going to say egg right out. When we talk about these, um, when we talk about making these gametes, we have to start off with a stem cell. So when it says germ cells, that's what it's referencing. But it mentions that the spermatogonia, which is the sperm stem cell, is 2N, and the oogonia, which is the egg stem cell, is 2N. What is 2N telling you? It's diploid. So is that ready to fertilize? No. Why is that not ready to fertilize? It needs to be what? It needs to be haploid. So right here it has two sets of chromosomes. And in order to fertilize for an egg, we only need one set. It needs to be haploid. What would happen if this was used to fertilize? Why would I have a miscarriage? Too many chromosomes. Yes, you're exactly right. So the process starts off with stem cells that are diploid, but then they go through meiosis. They become primary spermatocytes if they're a sperm, primary oocytes if they're an egg. Meiosis 1 and 2, we covered that in 1406, so that ultimately we would end with haploid cells. Diagram. Stem cells for male and female. What was the main difference once meiosis was over, male versus female? Okay, sperm we have four. How many eggs do we have? One. These tiny ones are actually going to disintegrate. When are these made? Before birth. So this has to last until she's going through puberty and until it's time for her to reproduce. So what is this egg doing to these others? What did it do and why is it so much bigger? It consumed them. They took, it took, it did not consume them. <laughs> did not consume them. But it did take the nutrients. It took the cytoplasm. So you can see that these still have genetic material, but they have no cytoplasm. So they're not going to last long. They'll disintegrate. This one will make it. So in an egg, we start with the stem cell, and we end with only one egg that's able to be fertilized. Sperm, they don't start making sperm until, men don't start making sperm until they hit puberty. Start with one stem cell and end with four sperm cells. Remember in meiosis we talked about these sperm, that two of them will be male, two of them will be female. Why? A male has both X and Y chromosomes, okay? How many of these are the same? None of them are the same because all gametes are different. What step or what process occurs during meiosis or gametogenesis that causes them to be different? Crossing over, also called recombination. Yes. Okay, so just talking about sperm right now. It starts off as the spermatogonia, which is the stem cell it mentioned on the previous slide. Then it goes from primary spermatocyte to secondary spermatocyte, then to spermatid and sperm. For a sperm to mature, it takes six to eight weeks, so it goes through stages. Starts off as a spermatogonia, primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, spermatid, then sperm. Long process. One cell ends up being four, and we're going to look at the anatomy of a sperm on the next slide. So steps, one more time. We're starting with the spermatogonia, which is the stem cell, then going primary, secondary, spermatid, then sperm. 
questions here? It should be a review from first semester. Not this picture, this is a review. This is the one I need to get to. For a, a sperm to look like this, first of all, it starts off looking like this. And then it goes through six to eight weeks of maturation and ends up looking like this. <coughs> a mature sperm has DNA and mitochondria, and that's it. DNA and mitochondria. This part right here, the acrosome, is only used if that sperm comes into contact with the egg. It will get that sperm through the egg. If that sperm never finds the egg, that acrosome will never be activated. So this is just to get through the egg so that the genetic material can be dropped off. Why a bunch of mitochondria? ATP. ATP. The track from the male reproductive all the way to the female is a long journey. ATP is necessary, but remember for cellular respiration to occur, we have to have food come in for energy to come out. With that being said, we have a whole bunch of mitochondria stacked here to generate a lot of ATP, but there's a component of semen that actually has glucose in it so that the sperm can use that glucose in order to create ATP so that it can make it all the way up the female reproductive tract. Do we have endoplasmic reticulum? Do we have lysosomes here? Ribosomes. Nothing else. All we need is the energy to get this DNA to the egg. And then, of course, the tail is used, or the flagella is used for movement, to move it. Questions? Okay, oogenesis. We start with the oogonia, which is the stem cell, and I mentioned that on the previous slide. Then we go to a primary oocyte. We've already mentioned that this process takes place before the female is born. It says a cohort of germ cells. So that just means a group of them go to meiosis one, and then they stop. So all of those ova, those uh, primary o uh, oocytes, will stop after meiosis one and will not be activated again until she hits puberty. The female body will not put that much work into something that may not Fruit, be fruitful at all. When the egg is released, and we're going to study this, not so I'm going to show you today, but we go into detail a little bit later. When the egg is released, there are two layers, the zona pellucida and what's called right here the cumulus mass, but you and I will end up calling it the corona radiata. These are the two layers that the sperm has to get through in order to get to the egg. So these are the two layers on the outside of the egg that the sperm will have to penetrate in order to fertilize. Went through that already. Here. This is the egg. Here's the actual egg. Here it is in the ovary. This is what it looks like when it's released. All of this stays behind. In anatomy, we end up calling this the corpus luteum. We'll do all that. But this is what's left. So this is the zona pellucida, and then you can kind of see these groupings here. That's the cumulus mass. It will also be called the corona radiata but we'll look at that more as we get into the fertilization aspect. Questions? Okay, so sperm is a really good example of structure determines function. And we're doing external and internal fertilization tomorrow. So this is how far I wanted us to get today. And you have